Hey everyone, so we're still kind of early in the 3.15 PTU cycle, but I had a bit more time in the verse recently and wanted to talk a bit more about the massive changes in the way that the game plays now with the new medical gameplay and the new looting system. It's definitely not all great at the moment, and it can be pretty frustrating, but it's not all bad either. Before we start, if you enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like or subscribing, and if you really want to help me out, you can do so by hitting that join button. I really appreciate all of your support. Okay, so I want to start off on a more positive note by talking about some of the stuff that I've really enjoyed being able to do as a result of having the ability to loot bodies, along with the new loot generation mechanics in general. So if you weren't aware of this, every time you die in 3.15, you lose everything that you have equipped and anything in your personal inventory as well. This could become very expensive because while well before, you could spend maybe like 20,000 credits at first and be fully kitted out, and then not really have to worry from that point on about gear, since the only item that you would lose on death would be whatever you're holding, so maybe like one weapon worth a couple thousand credits. Now you'll lose everything that you have on you if you die fully, and you'll probably want to carry even more things with you now than you would before, since you don't have access to that magic global inventory. So if you think you're going to need something like a tractor beam multi-tool, you'll have to equip that, keep it in your backpack, or keep it in your ship at least. So I think equipment is going to be a much more significant expense moving forwards, but these new loot mechanics that have come online with 3.15 are going to help balance that out a bit. So there's actually a ton of places that I've heard you can find loot, and I definitely have not found them all yet, so be sure to let me know in the comments what your best finds have been. But since 3.15 is going to be coming along with a wipe, I figured I'd at least check out a delivery mission, since that's where a lot of people might start out. I still think they need to adjust the payouts on these, because 3000 credits for this 15 minute long mission is nothing, especially with those higher costs that I was mentioning. But what was nice is that when I got to the final drop off point, there was a box there with a pretty decent pair of snipers. I think each one of these is worth about 5,000 credits, which will be pretty nice once they implement selling items, but it's still nice at the moment because in previous patches you just have to buy these snipers, since no NPCs that I know of used them, and also I'm pretty sure this one I have here is a special variant of the A03 sniper rifle that you aren't even able to buy anywhere if you wanted to, since it doesn't even have a name at this moment, and I've never seen this skin before. So that was pretty cool to see, and especially since you'll actually be losing gear somewhat often in this patch, having equipment like this as a reward is actually useful whereas before it might have been a little bit underwhelming. After this starter delivery mission, I did a couple more of the regular ones that require three stops instead of one, like the qualifier one that they give you, but I only got loot containers on my last delivery for those. I only did a couple, so it might have been a coincidence, but yeah, it also might be that you only get one box to spawn per mission, which isn't bad, but I don't think it's enough of a bonus to make it worth doing more than a few delivery missions. But yeah, if you don't get this glitch like I got here, where the wind or something throws you around for no discernible reason, these delivery missions might be a decent way to relatively safely and easily build up a bit of an arsenal for yourself without having to buy it in 3.15. Now speaking of building up an arsenal, it is a bit interesting trying to move around large quantities of gear at the moment. So for a lot of this I was wearing the backpack that was listed as a small size, so it was understandable that it can't fit a lot, but a lot of the ship inventories are pretty small as well, at least from what I've heard. This Aurora here actually surprised me with how much space it had, and again you can access this by opening your inventory while being inside of your ship, but yeah I think they're still working on doing a balance pass on these numbers so that they make sense from ship to ship. Another thing to consider is that I think CIG wants this number to just represent space in the ship that's dedicated to personal items and not the whole cargo bay. So that's why I was a bit surprised with the Aurora's capacity, because as far as I can tell there aren't any sort of storage lockers in its cabin, but hey I'll take it. But yeah, if you do have a ship with more interior space and you run out of room in the inventory specifically, what you can do is choose the grab option for an item, which should create a box that you can just place somewhere in your ship. Then, for more permanent storage, you can just fly to a station and drop off your stuff there. I did notice that the stations don't actually give you a massive amount of room, so hopefully in the future you'll be able to rent out more space or something, but for now you might have to spread your stuff out a bit, or head planet side with your big hauls. And one thing I noticed that could be smoothed out a bit is that it doesn't seem like there's a way with the current UI to directly transfer things from your ship's inventory to the station, but you can just do this by moving stuff into your inventory as an in-between step, or by using that grab option again. But yeah, planning out and building up supplies isn't as bad as I thought it would be. It's actually kind of rewarding, and especially as persistence continues to improve and they make improvements to the inventory UI, it's going to get better. One thing I did want to mention briefly in regards to persistence is you might have seen the pretty exciting Spectrum post about trading and ship persistence in general. So I'll have that full post linked below, but the gist of it is that now they have the system that tracks what state your ship is in and what you have on board, including items and cargo, and in the event of a 30k it'll be stored at the station that you were last at, and you shouldn't lose any of your stuff. 
If this works, or even works most of the time, this is great news. I know people don't generally like band-aid fixes because it's work being done that might not help further the development of the game, but I think this will be a massive help to the quality of life in this patch. It's already enough to be losing all of your items anytime you die, even if it's to a glitch, but if you lost your whole ship inventory for 30ks, that would have been a tough pill to swallow. For me, this means I'll probably give trading a try again in 3.15, but it also means that you can be reasonably confident in using your ship to store personal items like suits and weapons, and you should only lose them if you get blown up. But yeah, I'm really happy that they did this, and it shows that they're trying to make the player experience a little bit more enjoyable where they can. Another thing I wanted to mention quickly is to be careful if you're trying out the new security contractor evaluation missions. These seem similar to the old missions, where you just go and clear out a bunker full of bad guys, but in these there are friendlies present and it's very important that you don't shoot them. I did read this in the contract, but for whatever reason I wasn't thinking and decided to just shoot the Hurston security personnel anyway. In my defense, I do think there should be some sort of indication of where your allies are on these missions, since in this scenario you're supposedly accepting a contract to help them out, but yeah, if you do this mission here on Hurston, or the very similar one near Crusader, make sure not to shoot any of the friendlies like I did. You get a pretty serious crime stat for doing so. There was some pretty cool loot that spawned here though, like this white version of one of my favorite helmets, the Fortifier. So again, missions like these don't have the best payouts, but in 3.15, 10 guys worth of weapons and armor plus whatever spawns in the boxes in these bunkers is going to be pretty valuable, so it might be worth your time to do a couple of these. So that was the loot side of things, now I want to talk a bit more about medical gameplay. So I want to start by talking about how to change your spawn point, because it is a bit more work than it was before. Whereas before you'd just spawn wherever you had requested to land last, now you actually have to go into a hospital and access a terminal to move your regeneration records to that location. Thankfully there are quite a few hospitals throughout the verse, so it's not as limiting as I initially thought this change could be. At major rest stops, the hospitals are conveniently located near the HABs and ship terminals, so it's not that much work to go over there and set your spawn. And there's even a crusty looking hospital in Grimhex, which is also where you happen to spawn if you die with a crime stat. I guess it's a good thing for criminals that they have access to an option in unmonitored space, but I'm not sure I'd fully trust the service here. And at other landing zones, it's a bit more of a pain to change your spawn since the hospitals aren't at the spaceport, so you'd have to take a train to them, but at the moment there's not much of a reason to have your spawn in a city, so it's no big deal. As for the rest of medical gameplay, I'd say it's a little disappointing at the moment. It's just a little bit too rudimentary in my opinion. I guess it makes sense for it to be this way while people get used to the changes because with the server population being so low, if it were a specialized skill that took a lot of practice to get good at, I could see a problem arising of not having enough skilled medics on one server. At the moment, I haven't seen any medical related missions pop up, so the only thing that you really have are the player beacons. These are pretty novel, and this one I did here was kind of fun because the turrets in this bunker were trying to shoot down my ship, so I had to land behind a cover and run the rest of the way there. But in essence, all you do is make your way to the player and then zap them with your healing laser. Again, this could definitely be fun, but at the moment, all of the fun is just coming from the player to player interaction, and I hope as they expand on the complexity of medical gameplay, the healing process itself will become a bit more challenging and engaging. And I have a few other issues with the current way that this down state works. First of all, the screen blacking out every few seconds is very annoying, and I don't think it adds to the immersion enough to justify it. Also, it makes it really difficult to coordinate a rescue. I know that you're supposed to be incapacitated, so communicating with other players shouldn't be super easy, but I think this is just an unnecessary level of inconvenience. Also, the UI for requesting a beacon I think needs to be reworked in a lot of ways. I saw someone set a reward for rescue of more than the default 10,000 credits, but I could not for the life of me see how to do this. Also, accepting someone else's attempt to rescue you still relies on pressing the left bracket quickly enough before the message disappears, which is made quite difficult by the screen constantly flashing. And lastly, I think that before you accept someone's attempt to rescue you, you should be able to see how far away they are. They can see how far away you are from them, and since, as far as I can tell, only one person can have your request at a time, I'd like to be able to know if someone's just a few minutes away, or all the way on the other side of Stanton before I entrust them with my health. I know this is just a first implementation, but these little things add a bit more frustration to an already frustrating mechanic. So it is a bit of a tough situation for CIG, because medical gameplay is going to be very important in the future, and it was always going to be a jarring change whenever they implemented it, but I think they should have held off a little bit longer, because it would have been a lot more manageable with just a few more game systems to come in alongside it. The first one that would really help out, I think, would be a robust NPC emergency service. Now I don't think these should exist everywhere, like I don't imagine there's going to be a ton of friendly healthcare workers in Pyro, but Stanton is a pretty civilized system, so I imagine at some point there's going to be NPC 
NPC ambulances that will be able to respond to calls. Obviously creating player interaction is the better option, so if they do implement this I think they should make it a slower option than what a skilled rescue focused player could do, but it still should be available. And then that's the other issue, is that with player counts being so low, everyone is super spread out at the moment. So even if someone is interested in helping you, the likelihood of them being able to get you in less than 15 minutes is very low, and that's a long time to just be waiting around in-game for someone to come pick you up. Star Citizen is already pretty slow paced, and waiting for someone to quantum travel from Microtech to Hurston just so that they can revive you definitely does not improve that aspect of the game. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. I do think it was a little bit early to put this in, and it could make the game incredibly frustrating to play, but I have been playing over the past few days and I haven't quit out of frustration yet, so who knows. And this should be the toughest part, because as more supporting systems come online, things should get a little bit easier. One last little annoyance with the new medical stuff is the new healing devices and how they can be used to overdose other players. So I apologize to whoever this unlucky test subject here was, but as you can see, even in an armistice zone you can use these medical devices. This is important to enable people to be revived in armistice zones, but it also allows for people to do this. You do get a crime stat if you overdose another player to the level of causing them harm, but there's a lot of areas and places like Microtech here that don't have any sort of security personnel walking around so you could just kind of go on a rampage, and since it's still an armistice zone, players really wouldn't be able to stop you, although I guess they could use their own medical devices. Also, I'm not sure if this is just because I hadn't gotten my crime stat up super high since I only did this to one person, but I intentionally went to find the guards in the spaceport, and they still wouldn't shoot me for some reason. So yeah, I'm not sure what the solution for this is, because you definitely do need to be able to heal people who have died of tripping over something in a landing zone, but if there aren't any guards, there's really not much of a way to deal with someone doing this. Maybe they'll just have to increase the guard presence for the time being. But then in places like Grimhex with no comlink, I could see this being absolute mayhem, since there'd be no repercussions for just dosing up everyone around you. Thankfully, these healing devices have pretty limited range, so if you're alert, you should be able to stay out of range of someone trying to do this, but if, for example, you're shopping somewhere, this could be really annoying to deal with. I think your best bet is to carry a bunch of those Resurgia pins that help decrease your blood drug level, but that only works to a point. I also want to hear from you all about this, and if anyone has any creative solutions to this problem. Now the last thing I wanted to mention is the whole 400i and Grey Cat Rock issue. If you haven't been following, they included a change to the 400i in one of the more recent PTU patches to stiffen its landing gear, which made the clearance underneath just big enough to squeeze a rock into the cargo bay. It still would scrape the underside of the ship, but it would fit, which was not possible before. This did get reverted recently, since a lot of people didn't like how the 400i looked with this change and how oddly stiff the landing gear was. Personally, I'd take that trade off, but I will admit it felt like a bit of a band-aid patch. The good news is that in the thread that I've got linked below, they've said that they'll be looking at more solutions to this problem later. I know a lot of people were saying stuff like, oh the rock doesn't need to fit into every ship, but I think that if it's so close, it might as well, and who knows what other vehicles that we'll get in the future, that would be nice to be able to fit into a 400i. A rock isn't all that necessary for an exploration ship to be able to carry, but that vehicle bay at the moment can only fit the open cabin cyclones, which don't seem like great options for exploration to me. In the future I imagine we'll get some sort of smaller version of something like an Ursa, just an all-purpose exploration rover, and that would be nice to have to be able to pair with a 400i and I think having a bit more clearance wouldn't hurt. In this reverted state, the cyclones still barely fit, and this awkward elevator design I think unnecessarily hinders the 400i's otherwise reasonably sized cargo bay. Alright, so that's all I have for this video. Despite these big changes, I've been having a lot of fun in 3.15, especially trying to find some of the new and unique items that are possible to find throughout the verse now. How have you guys' experiences been though? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe, or become a member. Now I want to thank my members GreatWatch93 and StarJumpStarlet, thank you so much for your support, and thank you all for watching.